Hallelujah. Come on one time and put your hands together and give God some praise. Amen. It's good to be in the presence of the Lord. Something has to break and something did. Somebody literally pushed through and touched him. Amen. So I don't know who needs to praise God on that level, but you just got a breakthrough. I felt it. It was something happened. Amen. In this house, something has to break. Something has to give. Have you ever felt like something had to give? I've been there. Amen. If you have your Bibles, look with me in 2 Samuel chapter 4. Begin with verse 1. Amen. 2 Samuel chapter 4. I changed it from what they have on, on the PowerPoint. They always ask me where we're going, and, and I tell them. And the errors that you see when I speak is my errors. So, amen. We're going to begin with verse 1. 2 Samuel chapter 4, verse 1. I would title this, When Haste Hurts Others. When Getting in a Hurry Hurts Others. And I... And I Already had this message to give to me. I was praying about what I should preach, and this kind of breathed through my spirit yesterday. And hours before we knew that Diane was going to get in an accident, when haste hurts others, and you never know what it, what a day holds, and you never know what's going to happen. Life's like a vapor here today and gone tomorrow. Thank God that she's still with us. But they would have been sitting right there tonight had she not been in an accident today. Amen. So you never really know. What's going to happen? That's why you need to be ready at all times. Amen. Be prayed up, paid up, and praised up because tomorrow your name may get called. And when God calls your name, you could be on the operating table and you're going. Amen. So let's read. Everybody there say amen. amen. Ish Besheth felt like giving up after he heard that Abner had died in Hebron. Everyone in Israel was terrified. Ish Besheth had put his two brothers, Banna and Rechab, in charge of the soldiers who raided enemy villages. Remnon was their father, and they were in the town of Beroth, which belonged to the tribe of Benjamin. The people who lived in Beroth had run away to get them, and they still lived there. And I said all that to say this. Saul's son, Jonathan, had a son named Mephibosheth, who had not been able to walk since he was five years old. It happened when someone from Jezreel told his nurse that Saul and Jonathan had died. She hurried off with the boy in her arms, but fell and injured his legs. When haste hurts others. Father, we love you. We praise you. We appreciate you, God. We thank you for the power of your word. God, we ask you to move in this sanctuary. Touch your people, God. God, there's some that are struggling. They have troubles and problems and pains. Pressure from peers. God, trouble on so many different levels, God, but we just come to praise you anyway. We praise you for what you do. We worship you for who you are. God, we ask you to bind anything in here, not of you, lose your anointing. God, we ask you to let us be attentive, of God, at receptive. God, we know that you love us the way we are, but you love us too much, God, for us to stay in the same place. You challenge us and you change us. We need you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Move. God, let your spirit touch every heart, every mind. And God, we ask you just to use us tonight. Let this word go forth with power, clarity, and authority. Touch each individual in here, God. And we need you so much. And everybody said amen. amen. And amen. When haste hurts others. Amen. There is a time to get in a hurry. Amen. There's the time that, amen, that it's necessary for you to get in a hurry and, and to move fast and be quick. But so many times we make decisions based on feelings and we do things and we buy things, we acquire and attain things that we didn't pray about, amen, and then all of a sudden that we, when we're in trouble and we have pains and problems, we tend to blame it on God, amen. When haste hurts others. I want to start with verse 1. Ishbosheth, his name means man ashamed. Man of shame. And, and, and I'm, I'm not going to open any closets or, or look at any skeletons tonight, but there's not a person in this house from the pulpit to the back door that don't, that don't have some problems in your past, some things that you could change if you could go back. Amen. The Bible said that Jesus bore our shame. Amen. He, he, he wouldn't know how we felt when we were shameful, 
but he had to be hung on a cross naked. He was mocked and ridiculed. Amen. Called the king of the Jews. It was put over his head. They mocked him and said, work a miracle. If you are who you say you are, come down. Amen. We'll serve you. Amen. The Bible said he was a man of shame. He bore our shame. Everybody in this house has got the shoulda, coulda, wouldas. And if you could go back, amen, you'd do something different. You have something, amen, that you're ashamed of. It may be a mistake you made in the past, amen. Some of you have some things that you don't want anybody to know about. You're ashamed of it, amen. But guess what? He knows how you feel. He bore our shame. There's nothing to do but move on. Give God some praise tonight, amen. Man of shame, he felt, I'm reading word for word, the Bible said he felt like giving up after he heard that Abner had died. He felt like giving up. How many times have you ever felt like throwing in the towel? You might not be truthful, amen, but I don't care what your title is. I don't care what caliber of anointing you have. There's not a person in here that hadn't felt like throwing in the towel and giving up. But the problem is, amen, felt, felt. We all have feelings, but you cannot wear your feelings on your shoulders, amen. You have got to move by faith and not by feelings. If we only went to church based on how we felt, we wouldn't come often, amen. You don't come based on how you feel you come based on how good he's been to you anyway would somebody praise God in the house he felt like giving up amen you can't give up some of you's been too close to God been amen been too far in the kingdom you got nowhere to turn back to you need to get to the place in God that turning back is not an option would somebody praise it Amen. You cannot give up. You will not believe the people that's backsliding on God. It's, it's a Fox News poll that they've taken. There's never been a time in history when church attendance is so low. And the Bible talks about before the coming of the Lord, there'll be a great falling away. The love of many will wax cold. Uh, but I don't know about you, amen. I'm going to be found in the house of God somewhere every Sunday and Wednesday giving my God praise. He's been too good to me to quit on him. He's blessed me too many times. He's worked too many miracles for my family for me to turn back. Would somebody praise God like he's been good to you tonight? He felt like giving up. That's why the Bible said we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. We walk by faith and not by feelings. I don't always preach when I feel like it. There's a lot of times I don't feel like it. You wouldn't believe the times that I tell Teresa to pray that I might call Taylor or Delinda to see if they'd preach for me because I don't feel good. But there's something about God when you get here, you feel a little better. That's good stuff. Have you ever been sick and went to the hospital and immediately when you got there you thought they was going to think you're crazy because your symptoms left? You felt better just simply by being there. And, and, and I walked in there several times, and the doctor said, what's wrong? And I said, nothing. I feel pretty good now. There's it, it, just a feeling about it. It's kind of like church, amen. You feel like giving up, but you get here, and you feel the anointing. You feel the Holy Ghost, and it gives you a second win, and you praise him anyway. And when you praise him, amen, it encourages your spirit, and you got the faith to fight one more day. So Ishbosheth, he felt like giving up after he heard. God, this is awesome, church. I'll never get through with it tonight. Just give me a, a little bit of your time, and we're going to get to the end. Hopefully, amen, he, he felt like giving up after he heard. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. But when you allow, your, this is your ears, your faith gate. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Amen. The, the measure of faith you have is based on how much word that you hear. But if when you're a trash can for the world and, and, and you lend your ear to negative people, amen, it, it starts a seed in, in, in your spirit, and, and then all of a sudden you have a bad day. Amen, he, he, he was felt like giving up after he heard. And some of you would be a lot better off if you cut ties with people that's negative, pessimistic, amen, that complain all the time. You cannot live a positive life living around negative people. You need to shake some people loose and say, God, I'm about to change the company that I keep. First Corinthians 15.33, amen, says good manners is corrupted by bad company. Bad company corrupts good manners. The company you keep often determines on, on, where, on what destiny you reach in life. He felt like giving up after he heard that Abner had died in Hebron. Now when somebody died, he felt like giving up. You can't quit on God because somebody leaves your life. You can't quit on God because somebody's not there. Amen. I love my mom. I pray God gives her 20 more years. Amen. But when he takes her home, I'm going to preach her funeral and praise God that, it, that she's with him. You can't quit because somebody's not there. You can't quit because God calls somebody home. You got to praise God anyway. Your life ain't based on somebody else. It's based on him. 
can't quit because somebody, amen, passes. You can't, amen, Sister Delinda lost a husband. Sister McAdoo lost a son. And this that's two of the biggest praisers in the house. You got to praise God anyway. Amen. amen. Your, your, your faith in God and, and your position in the kingdom isn't based on who's there or who's not. Amen. You can't quit on God because he said, I do, but he really didn't. You can't quit on God because you got the best woman or the best man on earth and they leave you. You got to praise God and pray for somebody better. Amen. And the church said, glory to God. So now he feels like giving up because he heard that Abner had died. Amen. There's so many people giving up for so many reasons. But I'm telling you tonight, I just come by on my way to heaven to let you know you got to serve God anyway. Bad news don't determine your day. Amen. Happiness is an inside job. You can praise God in the middle of hell. You can worship God in the presence of witches. Ah, this is good stuff, church. Amen. And the Bible says everyone in Israel was terrified. Everyone in Israel was terrified. Amen. Fear. False evidence that appears real. The Bible said God didn't give you the spirit of fear, but power. This is awesome stuff. Now, now the word of God isn't, it, isn't contradictory. Amen. The Bible said God didn't give you the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Then the Bible said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So, so what is it, God? You didn't give us the spirit of fear or the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. You have to have discernment. And the Bible said we need a teacher and a preacher to explain things. Amen. Fear. God didn't give us the spirit of fear but power, love, and a sound mind. Amen. There's two fears. Amen. There's a fear that you can have of the world, of hell, of the devil, of starting over, of trying. There's a fear that you have when you know you need to go back to school to further your education, start a new job, step out on faith, climb out on a limb, amen, there, there's, a, there, there's, there's a fear, amen, that it natural, God didn't give it to you, God didn't give you the spirit of fear, where you're afraid of witches and demons, we're not on a witch hunt, but when they come to you, you need enough of God to handle it instead of running, this is good stuff, so there, there is an unhealthy fear, God didn't give you the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind, amen, what gave you fear, you didn't know the fear when you was a child, fear is taught. When you was a child, you didn't fear anything. You can take a baby, amen, you can take a Rottweiler on a chain, amen, that's vicious, and that baby will walk straight up to it not knowing that it's dangerous. A baby has no fear because it hasn't been taught. Has no fear. You can set a baby up here and say, jump to me, and the baby will jump, not knowing the danger it's in. It has no fear. Fear is taught. You know what taught fear? You sitting up watching horror movies. Taught fear. That's why when you're trying to get the key in the door, you can't do it without looking behind you. Scared somebody's going to get you. You cut the light off trying to jump on the bed before the light goes out because fear's taught. It's taught. Amen. You didn't know that until, until you watched something you shouldn't have watched. Amen. I don't watch horror movies. I used to like them, but I don't watch them anymore. I don't read a horoscope. Amen. My, my future isn't determined on a sign, or, or my sign is supposed to be cancer and the devil is a liar. Amen, but my life ain't based on that. Horror scope, horror means fearful and afraid to scope something you can see. My life's based on this, not numbers, not the stars lining up. Uh, I paid too many tithes and blessed too many poor people and, amen, been in church too long to let my blessings be determined on a number, a star lining up. God is my supplier. Would somebody give God praise anyway? So there is an unhealthy fear. And then there is a good fear. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of the knowledge. What it means is, amen, it's, uh, there, there's a healthy fear that, that you're afraid of God. Not to be afraid that God's going to whip you in here. And I've heard people say that I wanted to come to the altar, but I was afraid. You don't have to be afraid of God in that way. But we need a healthy fear of God that we don't let him down, amen, that we don't displease him, that we won't get tied in sin. Come on, somebody, and give God. There's a healthy fear that you don't want to upset God. The Bible said it's dangerous to fall in the hands of an angry God. And what we have in this generation, we have no fear of God. People have no fear of God. Amen. They have no fear of God. I remember a time when I was coming up, amen, uh, and, and I knew a lady in, in, in Homerville that was a great Christian, and she would come to State Mill sometimes, and we'd be all out there playing basketball, drinking beer with our shirts off. We was just young boys. And when she pulled up because, amen, we just knew she was a Christian, we'd put our shirts on and hide her beard, take her Copenhagen out of her lip in reverence of her. You know, just in reverence, man. I mean, I mean, just respect. We, we didn't have to do it, but we respected her enough and the God that she served that we didn't want to disrespect her. There used to be a fear of God, but there's no fear anymore. 
Amen. There's no fear. People's got shirts that says, we have no fear. Amen. On, on the back of vehicles, there's stickers that says, no fear. No fear. So we have a generation that don't fear anything, but there is a healthy fear. It's when you fear God, you reverence him, you love him, and you don't want to upset him. And the Bible goes on to say, Ishbosheth had put his two brothers in charge of the soldiers that had raid, raided enemy villages. And the Bible goes on to say, amen, that they were from the town of Beeroth, which belonged to the tribe of Benjamin. The people who lived in Beeroth had run away to Gittim, and they still live there today, and Gittim means two wine presses. Now, all of a sudden, they got a problem so great, it pushes them out of the place they was in. Every now and then, a, 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 amen, something happens where you at to push you to a better place. They went to a place that had two wine presses. Now, I want to talk to you for a moment about wine. I'm not giving everybody a free pass to get drunk. Don't do that tonight. I'm not okay in that. The Bible said all drunkards will have their part in the lake of fire. But wine in the Bible is symbolic of joy. They drank wine, amen. They gave, the Bible said wine is for those that suffer. They didn't have lower tabs and oxycotton. They didn't have pain pills they had wine and strong drink and when the people had cancer and they were in excruciating pain they would give them wine get them drunk ease their pain the bible said wine makes the heart merry it's good stuff it's good stuff amen so here they they they, they push to a better place they was pushed to a better place. Every now and then, somebody will upset you and, and, and go against the grain and, and throw a pebble in the, in, in, in the lake, so to speak, to make ripples where you work. And what it is is God putting you in an uncomfortable situation to push you to a better place. God, is awesome. Amen. Kind of like the eagle with, 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 with the little eaglets when she all of a sudden she'd make the nest so uncomfortable that they was willing to just jump out and try to fly instead of staying there and hurt. And you may be in a place where God... Is pushing you to a better place. God, it's awesome. Amen. That get them means two wine presses, and the Bible said they're still there now. They're still there now. Don't build a house in tent territory. Don't make permanent decisions based on temporary feelings. This is good stuff. Don't get in a hurry and, and, and tie yourself to people, places, and things that you can't break free from when it's time for God to bless you. It's so good. You, you, you know, in, 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 a perfect, in, in a perfect world, can I, can I preach about something that none of, us, none of us done probably? In a perfect world, you go to school, you graduate, you get an education or a craft or a trade, and, and you get some money saved up, and, and you find you a place, and then you pray for God to send you a spouse, a husband or a wife, and you find them. Go to church with them. Talk about all the little ins and outs, what religion you like, what, what God you're going to serve. And then you get married, and then you have sex. Say it again. I know this sounds like a, 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 a foreign message, but this is Bible. It's good stuff. That, that's, in a perfect, that's in a perfect world. That, that, that's in this. And, and that's when you have a happy life and things work. Still going to have trouble. But, 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 it, but it's approved by God and blessed by God. But what we do, amen, is, 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 we, is we have several sex partners by the time we ever get married. And, and, and we've already acquired a few things that we have to pay for. So we get a job we can't stand just to pay for what we bought. And then all of a sudden you ill, agitated, aggravated all the time. And you got pregnant from somebody that was just, that was just supposed to be an acquaintance. And, 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 now you got a, and now you got a baby daddy that you can't stand. And in-laws and outlaws that you despise. This is good stuff. Now, I know this is none of y'all. I know y'all don't know no cases like this. But it exists. I, I know y'all are in the perfect world that I talked about to begin with. But that kind of stuff happens, church. It's good stuff. And I'm preaching it so, amen, you can relay it to your people that it never happens to them. But that's what happens. Amen. It's awesome. This is good stuff. We're going to take up another offering at the end. And then we're going to, amen, go home and be blessed. And the Bible says, Saul's son Jonathan had a son named Mephibosheth who had not been able to walk since he was five years old. He, he walked till he was five years old. And the Bible says, watch this. It happened when somebody from Jezreel told his nurse that Saul and Jonathan had died. She hurried off with the baby in her arms, but he fell and injured his legs. He was cared for by a nurse. And my question is, where was his mama or where was his daddy? He was cared for by a nurse that didn't have the discernment, amen, to, to keep him safe. 
And, and where was his mama and where was his daddy? And, and I'm talking to a group of people in, in small town America. And, and my question to a lot of people is where is the mama and the daddies? Amen. Of all the children that's going to fall. And, and I've told this before, Deuteronomy 8.22, God told Moses to build a battlement around the roof. See, just look at this stage tonight as the roof. All the roofs in Israel was flat. And, and the word battlement, when you look at it in Hebrew, means handrail. Build a handrail system over, over the roofs of your house because in Israel, amen, in ancient Israel, in the Old Testament, all the roofs were flat. And people would climb up there, and that's where they would have their parties. And, amen, that's where they would eat of an evening, of a morning. They would climb on the roof. But they, but they had no handrail system, so the children was falling off and getting killed. The children was falling in their own house, off their own house, and they was dying. So God told Moses, hey, man, just put a handrail up there to keep the children safe. That's why when you walk to a motel or a hotel on the second floor, it has a balcony, but it has a handrail system so your child can go out there safely without falling off. Amen. But here this child fell in his own house because his mom and daddy wasn't there, his nurse was. And I tell you, from the pulpit to the back door, we've all been guilty of hiring nurses that didn't care nothing about our kids. We give them something to nurse them. We give them something to babysit them. This, this, Walt Disney. We'll put them in front of a television where we can go on about our business, and that's their nurse. And don't, don't, don't support nothing Disney no more. It's good. Put your hands together and give God praise anyway. And, and, and how to defeat things that don't uh, line up with this is don't support it. So, so as for me and my house, we'll never buy or support anything Disney. Amen. Kind of like the old man told me the other day, I got no desire to go see Snow White and the Seven Genders. <laughs> and, and the church said amen. So here he was five years old. He walked till he was five. Then all of a sudden when the nurse heard, what's it say again? All of a sudden, it happened when somebody from Jezreel told his nurse, that Jonathan had died. She hurried off with the boy. All of a sudden now bad news causes her to hurry. Amen. When haste hurts others. God, this is awesome, man. The Bible says in your patience possess ye your souls. And, and, and some of you have hurt simply because you got in a hurry. I'm not talking about, amen, uh, in a fire. When a fire alarm goes off, it's time to hurry. When you hear the hurricane, with the hurricane drill, that's the time to hurry. Amen. All of a sudden now she heard. That somebody else had died. The same thing, amen, that happened with Abner in, in, in verse 1 has happened to her. She heard. Be careful who you get your information from. Be careful how you allow information, amen, to discourage you and take your courage and cause you to run away from things that you should stand up to. God, this is good stuff, church. All of a sudden, amen, he was five years old. It happened when somebody told her that Saul and Jonathan had died. She hurried off with the boy, but he fell and injured his legs. He didn't ask for it. He didn't deserve it. Amen. I guarantee you his mama would have held on to him and broke his fall with her. This is good stuff. She tripped. She tripped. But she was paid. She was a hireling. She was a babysitter. She was a midwife. Therefore, in, 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 instead of holding him and breaking the fall with her, she just fell on him and dropped him because she, she didn't give birth to him. Amen. She, she didn't care about him on that level. And therefore now he's crippled for the rest of his life. And you wouldn't believe the women that have left a baby with a boyfriend and came back and they molested, they hurt, they wrecked. It's good stuff, man. You wouldn't believe the young girls that have had their lives wrecked because mama got in a hurry and left the baby with somebody they didn't know. This is awesome, man. This is good. And, and, and I, would, I would ask, where is the mamas and where is the daddies? Where is the mamas and where is the daddies? I know a few men and a few women that live. Let, 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 let me tell you about church first. God hates divorce. Yeah, you should just stay with somebody. Amen. Tough it out. Make it work. As, as long as, you know, they're not trying to kill you. You know, graveyards are full of men and women that should have divorced. Then it would have been better off if she'd have left him because he ended up killing her. I, understand. I get all that, man. You know, God don't want you to divorce. But I do know a few people that toughed it out just for the kids. And I honor that. Can somebody give God amen anyway? But here, the mama wasn't around. The nurse, she was paid. Kind of like the Bible talks about some preachers and hirelings. They're there as long as you're paying them. Amen. But when the check gets cut or the ties dwindle down, they go off somewhere else. They're, they're not a real shepherd. They hired. Therefore, when the wolf comes, they flee. God, is good stuff, man. Amen. And here she hurried with the boy in her arms, but he fell and injured his legs. She wasn't injured because she didn't care for him enough to fall with him and to break his fall. 
And what I, I would like to ask people in this day is where is the real spirit of the mothers and the daddies at? And the church said, Amen. And the Bible said, One day about noon, Rahab and Banna went to Ishbosheth's house. It was a hot day, and he was resting in his bedroom. The two brothers went in his house pretending to get some flour. Be careful to who you give access to your house. Be careful who you allow in your house. This is good stuff. You know, there's people of different denominations and religions that come to your house and knock on your door. You, you, know, let me, I, you know, I'm Pentecostal. I'm Christian. I believe in, in, the, in the Bible rightly divided. I believe in being baptized with the Holy Ghost. We're Pentecostal. I believe that. Amen. When Mormons or Jehovah Witnesses come to the house, I don't invite them into my house. I, I, I don't agree with them. Amen. I don't believe the way they believe. There's, there's no need just sitting down and, and, and hashing it out and going over scriptures because they sure ain't going to convert me. And chances are I ain't going to convert them. So the best thing, what I tell them is, hey, I'm a preacher. I'm Holy Ghost filled. I believe in the nine spiritual gifts. Amen. Yielded to anybody that's under God's submission. Would somebody give God praise? And immediately, amen, they get ready to go. All you got to do is start preaching to them. They'll leave. Two brothers went into the house pretending to get some flour. Sister Delinda preached a message before. I'm big on titles. The title of this is when haste hurts others. Sometimes you got in a hurry and it hurt others. You got in a hurry and you married wrong, therefore it's hurt your kids. You got in a hurry and, 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 and left too soon, hurt your kids. This is awesome, man. In your haste, amen, you hurt others. In your patience, possess you your soul. I know I'd, I'd love to say in your patience God possesses your soul, but in your patience possess ye your souls. People take crazy chances with, with, with cross sections and railroad tracks, and in your patience possess ye your soul. That job ain't more important than your life. You might as well just be late, get a point, get fired, whatever you got to do, slow down. Don't take a crazy chance. Multiple people have been killed trying to beat a train because they was in a hurry awesome stuff. Give God praise anyway. Right. Sister Linda preached a message titled The Great Pretender. It was the title of a, a 60s song. But be careful of people that pretend. Pretend. Amen. They, they play games and they pretend to be one thing when there's something else. And, and, and a lot of it happens at the altar in the chapel when you say I do. Amen. And then you get home and you're like where is the man I just married? This joker ain't who I, he got a twin brother or something. Amazing how people can change so quick because they pretending. This is good stuff, man. And, and you know, so many times, we, we've married a couple hundred people probably in 10, 11 years. A lot of people, marriages, and, and seeing people get married. But you, but, you know, none of the serious stuff comes out during dating. You know, while you dating, man, sugar won't melt in their mouth. You know, you can put, you, while you're dating, you can put M&Ms in your hand, baby, and they still won't, they won't even sweat. You understand me? You, you that sweet. You know, nothing comes out that you need to talk about. Because you're so caught up in, in lust and infatuation and like, amen, that you don't want nothing to come out to separate you, so you overlook all that bad stuff. Well, therefore, once you say, I do, and y'all really do, and then all of a sudden, a year or two down the road, serious stuff comes out. Like, like, like what did you really do in your past and what skeletons in your closet and what junk's in your trunk and what kind of God do you serve and hey, all, these, all this stuff. Then all of a sudden what happens is you're sitting across the table from somebody and, every, and, and them breathing aggravation. I'm serious, man. They, they, them breathe, they, they breathe too loud. All of a sudden, little, little, little stuff you didn't hear when y'all was dating because you were so deaf and blind by lust. Then all of a sudden, you're looking at them and their jaws popping, and you're like, it's crazy. Girl. You know, man, it, it, every little noise upsets you. You know, you just ill about everything. They can't do nothing right. It's simply because, amen. Let's go a little. This is awesome, man. Y'all know I'm preaching right. It's good stuff. And the Bible said they pretended, amen, to get some flour. This looks like a movie, man. Sugar, flour, they pretending to get flour. Watch what they do to this man. But since they were inside, they stabbed him in the stomach and killed him, pretending to get flour. Pretend, and now he's dead simply because he gave the wrong people access to his house. Be careful who you give access to you. Be careful who's got access to you. Everybody don't need access to you. 
They cut his head off and took it with them. This is amazing, man. I know we can read through this, but this really happened. This is not a fable. Jesus told fables and stories, amen, parables, the Bible calls it. This really happened. They cut this man's head off, amen. This ISIS spirit just didn't start 10 years ago. It's been around a long time. They cut this man's head off and carried it with them. You wouldn't believe the people that has wicked hearts, evil. It's good stuff, man. And the Bible says, they walked it across the Jordan Valley all night long, finally, Amen. They went to see David and told him, Your Majesty, here is the head of Ishbosheth, the son of your enemy Saul, that tried to kill you. Watch what he does. The Lord has let you get even with Saul and his family. It looks like David would have been glad, but I'm going to tell you something. You'll always be promoted. God will always promote you or, or demote you based on the opportunity you have to get even with an old enemy. Please get this church. You'll always have an opportunity presented to you to get even with an old enemy, and God, and God will judge your character based on how you respond to getting even with an old enemy. It's amazing stuff. Joseph was sold into slavery. Potiphar's house. Sold into slavery. His brother sold him out. Potiphar bought him and made him a slave, made him scrub his floors and baseboards. The Bible said God was with Joseph everywhere he went. But Joseph was at the, house, at the house along with Potiphar's wife. The Bible says she looked at him, she liked him, she liked the way he was built, liked the way he looked, he was handsome. She said, lay with me. Joseph was about to be promoted or demoted based on his character, and he was presented with an opportunity to get even with an old enemy. God, this is awesome stuff. I'm going to stay here for just a minute. God will test your heart at an opportunity to get even with an old enemy. What better way to get even with an old enemy, amen, Joseph could have easily said, you know what? He's made me scrub his toilets, his baseboards, and here his good-looking wife wanting to sleep with me. I'm fixing to get even with an old enemy. Nobody around, nobody I never know. But Joseph said, I will not sin against him or against my God. And it angered her, but God promoted him. Will somebody give God praise? <laughs> You'll always be promoted or demoted based on how you respond to getting even with an old enemy. It, it, this, 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 is, this is awesome. This, this is amazing. And the Bible says that this is what David did. It looks like David would have said, great, another enemy dead. Great, he tried to kill me. His granddaddy throws spears at me. They've hated me. They've been haters and backbiters and despisers. And now he's dead. Let's throw a party. But I'm going to tell you something. David wasn't happy about it. He said, I swear that only the Lord rescues me when I'm in trouble. God, this is good. David said, God protects me. Amen. The Bible said a man can't receive anything unless it be given him of the Lord. Anytime somebody gives me something, naturally I thank them for it. But then I, under my breath or to God, I say, God, I thank you because they wouldn't have done it if you hadn't. I told him with somebody praise God tonight a man can receive nothing unless it be given him of the Lord and the Bible said David was angry about it and the Bible said David told them when a man came from Ziklag and told me that Saul was dead he thought he deserved a reward for bringing good news but I grabbed him and I killed him David said man I ain't happy because somebody he might be my enemy but I didn't want him dead I wanted him to be converted God this is good stuff man and God will always judge your heart based on, amen, how you feel about an enemy. The Bible says we love our enemies. Amen. Pray for those that despise you. Amen. Those that speak all manner of evil against you. The Bible said love your enemies. This is good stuff, man. But we get to the place that, amen, we, 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 we lean a little bit to the world system, and then God has to humble us and chastise us and get us back. This is awesome. David said, I'm not glad. The Bible said, rejoice not over me, O my enemy. Though I have fallen, I will rise again. Rejoice not over me, O my enemy, though I have fallen, Micah. Rejoice not over me, O my enemy, though I have fallen, I will rise. You wouldn't believe the people that would laugh if you fell. You wouldn't believe the people that want you to fall out of God simply so they can look at you and say, I told you so. But the Bible said, if you laugh when the enemy falls, even if God's whipping them, that God will change his anger and turn his anger from them to you. You wouldn't believe the times in my life that God would have really whipped me, but people couldn't keep their mouth off of it. It's awesome, man. Oh, this is good stuff. You wouldn't believe the times that God would have whipped people. And a lot of people, hindsight, watches things happen, and, 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 and they sit there like God 
is just waiting to whip somebody for a mistake they made, a sin they got caught up, tied up in, and people's just standing back like Jonah. You know, Jonah went to Nineveh and preached God's word and said, God's going to kill all of you. Well, the king declared a fast and repented, but Jonah sat over there, amen, in the shade of a gourd tree and, and waited on God to kill them. But they repented. God changed his mind and started blessing them. But Jonah was just waiting on them to die. You wouldn't believe the people, amen, that have sat back and watched somebody's life and wondered why God didn't whip them publicly. And the reason he didn't is because you couldn't keep your mouth off of them. Because if you whip them, God won't. So I've done things in my past, and amen, people talked about it, and I, and, and I didn't set the record straight. I wanted them to whip me instead of God. This is awesome stuff. This is amazing, man. It's good stuff. The Bible said if you continually, amen, if somebody does something and you talk about it, you're happy about it, you're glad about it, you spread rumors, you're a busybody, you're a gossip, you're a backbiter, that God will turn his anger from the person that done the wrong and turn it to you. You just go into church and pay in your tithes, but you can't keep your mouth off somebody. God will turn his anger from the sinner to you. It's awesome, man. That's why it's best to get a divine zipper to lift and shut your mouth. It's good. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. And amen. And all of a sudden, he said, you evil men have done something much worse than he did. You killed an innocent man. Innocent man. You wouldn't believe the innocent people that die. So, when, when, when I sin... When you sin, something has to die. I will take it as far back as, as Genesis. Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve. Tree of knowledge of good and evil. God told Eve, when you eat the fruit, you're going to die. She ate the fruit. She didn't die like she thought she did. She died a spiritual death. Amen. Something had to die. Next scripture says God clothed them with skins because they knew they was naked. Nobody talks about the innocent lambs that had to die to clothe them. God himself killed lambs, skinned the hides, tanned it, and wrapped around their naked bodies. Something had to die to cover their sin. When we sin, something dies. Give God some praise anyway. When David sinned with Bathsheba, she was pregnant, but the baby died. David, God's man, the giant killer, the praiser that danced out of his clothes, the man, the Bible says, a man after God's own heart laid on the ground in his own urine seven days and begged God to save a baby that God killed. Something has to die. This is good stuff, man. And, and you know, David's actual baby died. But prom I promise you this, when you get tied up in a sin that you refuse to repent from, Something's going to die. People call their jobs their baby. Amen. They, 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 all kind of things is their baby. You know, some men have a Corvette. Amen. It's called their baby. Something's going to die. God, God's going to upset something because God's more concerned about your soul than he is your stuff. Give God praise anyway. He said you killed an innocent man. You've killed an innocent man. Th th this war you see in politics with Democrats and Republicans, Republicans trying to end abortion, Democrats trying to keep abortion alive. You know, down here, there's this, there's this uh, tattoo parlor down here, the brass quill. On, on the front of it, it says, abortion is health care. Yeah. One, re one, one reason God is angry with that, is angry with America, is because the Bible said God hates hands that shed innocent blood. God hates hands that shed innocent blood. I am a realist. You, un you understand me? I am a Christian realist. I understand. Now, let me tell you something. If I had a baby that I'd raised for 30 years that was having a child, and, and we in the operating room, and the doctor looks at me and says, look, one of them's got to die. Both of them can't live. You know, I ain't so churchy that I'm no earthly good. I ain't so heavenly minded that I don't have sense. You understand me? I, th 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 you know, I, I get it. These cases, man. You know, you know, if I'm in the operating room and this doctor looks at me and says, one of them's going to die. Naturally, I'm going to save my 30-year-old daughter I've been with all my life. You understand me? So, so I understand stuff happens. But what God's angry about and what the Republicans are trying to stop is killing babies because you can't handle your flesh. Amen. It's good stuff. You know, you know he, God and, and, and the Republicans talking about all the women, amen, that want to use their bodies as a sex tool, get pregnant just because you're too lazy to get up and take a pill, you get pregnant and kill a baby. It's good stuff, man. You know, that stuff's free. Can I, can I, be, can, can I, can I be a little worldly in church? Rubbers is free. It's good stuff, man. Condoms is free. 
Birth control is free. It's better than killing a baby. Will somebody give God praise anyway? So I am against abortion. So is the Republicans. And here David said, you have killed an innocent man. 60 million babies have been murdered amen, at the hands of doctors. This came out that, that they sold body parts of babies to buy cars. Do not have an abortion. What, I, 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 almost every service, sometimes I have people come up to me, amen, quietly and privately. I would never tell, and I never will. And they say, please pray with me. I had an abortion. And, but listen to me. If you've had an abortion, simply ask God to forgive you. And I know you probably already have, amen, and it's over. Don't have another one. Don't have another one. God hates hands that shed innocent blood. God hates the doctor's hands that shed innocent blood. This is awesome. Let's go a little further. He said, you have killed an innocent man in his own house, on his own bed, and I'll make you pay for that. What you sow, you're going to reap. Sometimes you're the reaper. Sometimes you are the reaper. You know, there have been times in my life that I've saw something and, and, you know, God really let me say something about it. I'm a Christian. And, and it looks like we ought to take everything and be a doormat for everybody. But it's times that God has let me be the reaper. This is good stuff, man. It's awesome. This, 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 this is good. You know, I, I heard something the other day. J.C., I, I, I never watched nothing on social media, but she showed me something. And it, was, it was a young black guy. He was talking. He said, he said, if you always got to be the bigger person. He said, I'm so sick and tired of somebody telling me, be the bigger person. You always got to be the bigger person. Be the bigger person, son. He said, I'm sick of being the bigger person. He said, if I always got to be the big person, I'm around too many small people. He said, he, he, he said I know what the Bible says. He said, but I ain't in the Bible. <laughs> he, said, he said, I'm going to get you for it. You know, but it, we don't do that. But I'm just, it, it's kind of real and funny. You know, and, and, and people say it, and you need to always be the bigger person. But, you know, like, like he said, sometimes you may be around too many small people. This is good stuff. Give God praise anyway. So now David said, I'm going to make you pay for it. David then told his troop, take these two brothers and cut off their hands and their feet and hang their bodies. This is awesome stuff, man. Cut off their hands and feet. And he simply done it as a show. And, and I was praying about something one time. Never heard a preacher say it. Never heard a teacher teach it. But Jezebel, the Bible says, she hated the anointing. She hated prophets. Amen. And, and, and as Ahab rode into town, Jezebel, the Bible said, painted her face one more time. She put makeup on to seduce this preacher. And she tried to change his heart based on how she looked. But the Bible said, Ahab looked up and said, who's on the Lord's side? The eunuch said, I am. He threw Jezebel's body off the balcony. And a he took his war horse and stomped her body. And the Bible said the blood splattered on the wall. It's good stuff. That's awesome, man. You, you, you know, he had done made, he had done made a stand. She hated the anointing. And all of a sudden, now he takes his war horse, stomps her body, blood splatters on the wall. He goes in to make a sandwich. Let me tell you something. When Ahab and Jehu come to you, you, you can go home and set your house in order. It's over. He stomped her body. She had painted her. She was a beautiful woman, man. She painted her face to seduce him, and he was so tied to God. Amen. God, God sent him to rid the evil, the Old Testament. He stomped her body. Bible said to the blood spotted on the wall, he tied his horse and walked in and made a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Serious, man. And, and the Bible said when he came out to disclose her body, the dogs had ate it. Dogs had ate it. Dog, the dogs is her palmberry. Ate everything but her hands, her feet, and her head. Scripture, King James. Dogs ate everything but her hands, her feet, and her head. And I was praying, never read a commentary about it. And, and I said, God, why wouldn't they eat her hands, her feet, or her head? Because the Bible said God hate, hates feet that are swift to run to evil. God hates hands that deliberately run to sin and shed innocent blood. And God hates the mind of the wicked. God, this is awesome. Her mind was so wicked. Her mind had been in the gutter her whole life. Her hands had shed so much innocent blood. Her feet had been so swift, a busybody, to run to evil that even the dogs had enough sense not to touch the evil on her body. Would somebody give God praise anyway? And the Bible said because these men had committed such a sin against innocence and been so glad to carry the news on their feet, David had their feet and hands removed. Amen. When... Haste hurts others. 
You wouldn't believe the times that I've thought about simply since this was breathed in my spirit at the times that I've got in a hurry and hurt other people. The times that I wanted it my way and I wanted it now and it hurt other people. And I'm telling you simply pray on it and lay on it and wait on it. If it's, if, if it's for you, amen, people are, people are hurry you up. People are hurry you up. Hey, you got to hurry. You know, salesmen are hurry you up. Hey, I got two people coming to look at it today at lunch. I'll talk to you tomorrow. And, man, then your heart just starts racing. You want it now, you know, then you go ahead and get it. Car salesman is the biggest liar. You know, you looking at it, amen, ain't nobody looking at that thing. Well, I got somebody calling me about it right now. I'll call you back in 30 minutes. They don't call you in 30 minutes. You just sweat. Oh, my God, somebody got it. So you just run up there and write them zeros out. It happens, don't it, Taylor? She used to be a car salesman. Now she's delivered and saved. <laughs> Give God some praise anyway. So if y'all bought a car from Taylor, she's forgiven. Don't mess with her in the parking lot. <laughs> hey, man, but, but that's how it works, man. That's how people are. That's how salesmen are, you know. They, they, you know, they work on emotions and feelings, and they see that you want it, and all of a sudden, you know, they entice you simply to get in a hurry. And therefore, people will do the same thing too, ultimatums. Give me a ring by this date. Marry me by this date, you know, if it don't happen now. But look at the times that we've done God that way, gave God ultimatum. God, if it don't come through, if he, she, whatever, God, I, I, don't know how long, I don't know how much longer I can take this. Don't get in a hurry and wreck your life. Don't get in a hurry and drop the thing that you love the most. In the name of getting in a hurry, don't lose the thing that you love the most. In your patience, possess ye your soul. Don't allow other things to babysit your kids. Please get this. Do not sacrifice time with your children I know you got to have money. Ecclesiastes says money answers all things, but money ain't everything. Money ain't everything. At the end of the day, in the end of your life, I promise you, you'll value the time you have with your family more than the money and the materialistic things that you have. Amen. Nothing is worth time with your family, building relationships and memories. I know so many people, amen, that wanted money and they got it, but they got no relationship with their kids. Kids despise them. Kids can't stand them, have no relationship with them at all. Uh, our son Dalton, we got Dawson and Dalton, some people confuse him. Dalton had a job at the railroad. He would have been making $160,000 in a couple of years when he deadheaded, amen, and, but it kept him away from his kids, amen. One, one gentleman told him that worked with the railroad, said I had a great life. Uh, I made a great life for my family. I just missed it. And he wasn't willing to make that sacrifice. So he went back to where he could be home at 4 o'clock, have weekends with his kids. I honor him for that. Amen. amen. Do not waste time on unnecessary things, and drop the thing that you love the most. Money is not everything. Time and memories mean a whole lot more. Stand to your feet in the presence of the Lord. Amen. When haste hurts others. She got in a hurry 